welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve tips, tricks, benchmarking, and technology I think you need to know. If you're new here, hit subscribe. We do a lot of different videos from the typical this effect, that effect, and I'd love for you to stick around and check it out. In the meantime, today I'm going to teach you how to create a vignette. A vignette is the darkening or lightening of corners that helps the viewer focus in on the subject, in this case me. We can alter the vignette by growing it, shrinking it, making it darker, making it brighter, or even feathering it in and out. So let's get into Resolve and find out how to make it happen. Jumping right into business, you can see I am on the color page down here at the bottom in DaVinci Resolve 17.3. Here I've got my preview window. I can see exactly what I'm working on. I can see my node graph, and my node graph allows me to, you'll notice I can resize this. My node graph allows me to see the effects as I layer them, step after step after step. I'll start here with a power window, and I do that by selecting at the bottom here the window page, and I'll choose a circle. This allows me to now dynamically change it, so I can make it feather in and out. I can grow the circle, and that's just what I'm going to do. Further, I'm going to make it wider. And what I'm looking for here is my distance from the corner in and to the end of this feathering. So make that a little tighter for the moment and pull down here to not leave a weird shape. If I'd like to scroll out, I can. So this is the scroll wheel mouse in and out. I'm gonna do that so that I can see exactly what I'm affecting around. Again, my goal with the vignette is to highlight me as the subject, draw people's eyes in. So I'll keep it centered on me here in the middle of the frame. And now that I've got my power window set up, I can affect either the inside of that power window with my color nodes, see how it's all darker? And I did that by coming down here to my offset wheel, grabbing this horizontal bar and swinging it to the left. I'm going to swing it back to the right. In fact, I'm just going to hit reset right there and make sure I'm right there at 25, which is its starting point. I don't want to affect the inside, though. I'd like to affect the outside. So here in the middle bottom of the screen, you can see the mouse. I am going to hit the invert button. This inverts my mask, and in fact, if I really wanted to see what's masked up here in the top left, I can click Highlight, and now I can see what I'm going to affect by adjusting any of the effects against the node. I'd really like to have my effect separate from my mask, though, so here in my node window, I'm going to select my current node and hit Alt-S or Command-S on Mac, and the Alt-S here on Windows has added another node to it, I'm going to connect this blue bar from one node to the next, and what that does is it tells it carry the mask over. And that's handy, because now I've got a node here, and I'm going to type mask, and I'm going to name, if you haven't set up any hotkeys for this, you'll need to come in, right-click, and go to node label. I've set up a hotkey for tab, and then here we'll have the vig. So now you say, okay, great, so you've masked it. You can see exactly what you're affecting, and what do you want to do with it? Well, I'm going to take my offset wheel and again drag it down, and all of a sudden you can see I can get a really tight or a really loose or even brighten it up vignette here. So I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'll make it a little bit darker than I might want it to be so I can see where it is. I'll go back to my mask node, and I think I want to feather this in some more. And this should carry the vignette a little bit further into the screen, and it should make it the gradient a little bit longer. Let's see what we got here. All right. And so now you can see I've gone pretty dramatic, and I don't want to go that hard, so I'll come back down here to my offset wheel and spin it back up a little bit. And you might say, okay, well, what did this really do? Uh, you know, not too much, which is kind of the goal. So if we were to just take that outside of it, you can see this is what it looked like before, and here we are now. That's probably even still a little too much. So I'll take that off just a little bit, pull that back up, and we can look again. Off and on. You can, again, play with this by adjusting your mask. You could also adjust the color that you apply. So here I'd say, well, I'm going to turn it a little bit hazy and red. Maybe I go a little bluer any way I want. So that's just by moving the offset wheel. For bonus points, you could affect only the darker colors in the screen, or maybe you could affect the color of the darker colors in the screen. Either way, you get to make your own choices here. 
And so I'm just gonna pull down on the offset wheel. This is how I normally treat it, just because I'm trying to make it as fast as possible to apply. And if you really find one of these that you like, here in the gallery, you're able to right click on your image and click grab still. What this does is it saves the look. So if I came to another clip, which as you see does not have it, I can come to my gallery and drop it on top and I now have my grade and my look already set up. So that's a good way to carry a look from one page to the other, kind of a bonus tip, but it works really well with vignettes because you see exactly what you're getting. And that's how you create a vignette. Thanks for sticking around for extra bonus points. See if you can figure out how to make this effect happen. Oh, all right. Well, thank you and have a great day.